Okay, good afternoon. Stuart Williamson here. Yesterday was the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee um, meeting and they cut rates, so 0.25%. Now, what does that mean for landlords? Okay, and what does that mean for the property market in the UK? I mean, to go back to the budget last week, the main thrust of it was more tax, more spending, more borrowing. And it's the latter bit, the borrowing bit, that has substantial implications for the UK property market. Why is that? That's because if they're going to be borrowing 70 billion more in the marketplace, which is what they've got to do, then it's going to increase government bill, government bond yields. They're going to have to pay more for the money they borrow. And that means the whole of the general money market is going to be, become more expensive. So what that means to us as investors in the offshore world is the cost of borrowing will increase, which could mean, therefore, that mortgages could increase. Now, the Office of Budget Responsibility, which is an oxymoron if ever heard one, has saying now that they believe that interest rates might might settle at between 3.75 to 4.5% over the next five years, which translates to us as buy-to-let investors as possibly 5.5%. So is that it? Does that mean the mortgage, you know, the mortgage market is pretty stuffed and we're not going to be able to buy and make, make a profit? Well, it could do that. You know, the Bank of England itself has reacted in the same way as the markets are, and I think Virgin yesterday increased directly after the market rate was increased virgin increased their their five-year fix by half percent and i think one of the other uh, lenders did the same so already the market's starting to say well you know perhaps interest rates aren't going to fall like we thought they were and therefore that's not going to be great and the bank of england itself quoted saying that they expected in december to have to look more cautiously at what's going on in the marketplace and whether inflation would allow them to cut rates again. It says it'd be more cautious about cutting rates. And that's obviously not great news for buy-to-let investors. It has not really want what we want. We want interest rates to go down. So what can we do about it? Should we, as they, everyone seems to be telling us all the time, throw our baby out with the bathwater and say, let's not bother doing any more buy-to-let? A lot of people are doing that. And a lot of people are calling it a day. And it's expected over the next 10 years that there'll be at half a million less properties out there for rent because of these changes. Now, so what I want to look at is, if interest rates can be higher for longer, how will we cope? And it's a great, great term article written by ARLA, the Association of Residential Landlords, uh, that came out yesterday that gives us some light at the end of the tunnel and why there is a lot of positive hope and why you should stick with the buy-to-let market. So Ben Beadle, the Chief Executive of the NRLA and National Residential La Landlords Association, very easy to mistake for the National Rifle Association, which wouldn't get me into much fun with our friends in the US. They quote saying that hiking stamp duty on homes to rent when 21 people are chasing the average property is absolute madness. Analysis, analysis by Capital Economics has found that increasing stamp duty from 3 to 5% will see a net loss of half a million homes to rent over the next 10 years, which is obviously a bad situation to be in. Apparently the Institute of Fiscal Studies warned the Chancellor that higher taxes on stamp duty would lead to a higher pulling out of people from the rental market and therefore rents going up. Now, how much will rents go up by? At the moment, according to the ONS, to September 2024, rents went up by 8.4%. So if it's true that we have 600,000 people emigrating into the country every year, and if it's true that the Institute of Fiscal Studies does quote that for every 500,000 people coming into the, into the country, house prices will go up by 2%. And if it is the case then that over the next 10 years, we're going to see a cut of more than 310,000 properties, which actually the figure is, and there will be a loss of 2.2 billion in lost tax revenue. What's going to happen to the rent? Well, according to Hamptons, they believe that rents will go from 8.4% increases per year. at across the UK. Places like London are 9.5%. They believe they'll be above 10% a year. So where is the hope that we can look for in the fact that mortgage is going to stay higher for longer? The hope is that, frankly, as long as you can get a mortgage, as long as you put a reasonable amount down, 25 30%, then the rental income you're going to get in no time at all is going to be absolutely eroding that, that mortgage away. It's going to be killing it, in other words because it is going up by so much. Now that's just Hamptons, it's the only one I could find on the research as to 
as to what's going on. But the truth is that the you know, the Institute of Fiscal Studies said it was a mistake. You know, Capital Economics has said it was a mistake to increase stamp duty. You know, what the country needs is affordable housing and lots of affordable rental properties, which is not just not there. What we have to look at is we can fill that gap by helping buy buy to let property, by putting it into the marketplace, making sure it's good, it's quality, and if you want to rent it, and then they will. And we can make money as as investors and we'll be helping people get into you know, their own property. Because face it, people aren't going to be able to afford to buy their own properties in the UK really for a long time to come. First time buyers are going to be hit when the stamp duty comes off in um, March next year, when the discounted levels, it's going to be harder for first time buyers to get on. And they're not addressing that in the government today, which they should be. So what is the light at the end of the tunnel? Yes, interest rates are going to be higher for longer. But if we've got rental increases going up at 10% a year, which may or may not be true, but they are 8.4% at the moment, then buying a property is still a solid, profitable outlook. You buy a good quality property that gets good tenants. You buy a rubbish property, you won't get great tenants and you'll have problems with them. So invest in your own futures. That's market wrap number 230 for now. I've got a few quotes just from last week. I'll pick those up. All right. Stop calling it interest. Call it usury rates. It's not interest rates. Nice quote. Why is increased minimum wage a good thing? Do we like companies putting up prices to pay the increases? You know, it is quite expensive to live in the UK in, in many areas. So increased minimum wages may be a good thing or may not. And finally, good time for selling. The bank rate is about to start falling and capital gains tax is at 24%. Is it really? I don't think so. You know, I've been doing this for 30 odd years and every, I don't know, every five years, the end is nigh. I was speaking to a gentleman this morning and uh, we spoke about, I think, prior to COVID about him buying and he never didn't go ahead. And since we had COVID, we've had the Ukrainian war, we've had this, we've had the other. There's always reasons why not to buy. Thank you for listening. Do take care. Cheerio.